Okay, so this lesson is properties of proportion. This is the lessons and questions. So this is our little web quest where I'm teaching it, and then you're going to go through and answer the question. Um, the questions are embedded in, but I'm going to do a problem, an example, two examples probably for each problem. Okay, well, one or two examples. Um, so the first one here we have, here's our first example. So this one's a little bit of a review. It says all of the following are equivalent proportion itself. So we know how to do that. First, we got to go over here, and I'm going to write it this way. EL equals G over H. And then all I'm going to do is crisscross. So we got EH equals GL. Okay? Okay, so... EH equals GL, and that's a G, sorry guys. Okay, now the next one, we're going to write it like this, E over L equals H over G. And I think I should have took a picture of this, give me a second, let me get that by itself. Okay. So here we go. So we're going to crisscross. We're going to have EG equals H times L. So, so far, those two don't match because the E and the H go together over here and the E and the G go together over here. So let's try this last one here and see which one doesn't belong. So remember, looking for the one that doesn't equal when you simplify. So we got F over E equals G over H. And I'm going to cross multiply. We got FH equals GE. So we're looking for the ones. And guys, let me make sure you understand these once I go through it. But we're looking for the one that has F and H together on the same side. So this one was G and F. Let me make that G and F. This one was EH. This one had F and H together, just like this one. And the E and G, it's a G and E. So E, G equals G, E. They're the same, okay, guys? They're just written in different order. So we're just looking for the one that has the same two letters together. So these two over here are the same. So the answer would be this one. That's our answer, because this one does not equal the other two. Because it's not equivalent. Okay? So now, I'm only going to give you one example to answer number two. So you should be able to answer number two. Okay? So the next one we're going to do is the one that goes with question number four. So I'm going to take a picture of this and put it by itself. Okay, let's see here. So let's write out what it says. It says if F over A, and I'm going to write it this way, equals X over Y, then which of the following must be true? So first of all, I need to simplify this one. I need to crisscross. So we got 5Y equals 8 times X, which is 8X. Everybody see what I did, hopefully? Okay, and so guys, since we got two different variables on the different side of the equation, that's all we can do. So what I am looking for is when I simplify these, I want the one that's going to give me this when it simplifies. So what we got to do is go through as many of these problems that we need to until we get the one that says 5y equals 8x. So let's look at the first one. We got 8 over 5 equals x over y. So we're going to do the same property. We're going to crisscross. So this one here, we got 8y. Okay, crisscross over here. We got 5 times x. That equals 5x. So let's see. We need, right here, we need the 5 and the y together. So you see we have the 5 and the x together. So we can automatically cross out that one. That one's not going to work. Okay? And so I'm going to erase this. So, what else? Yeah, I'm going to erase this one. Let's try the next one. 
because you can always go back and look and see how I did that. Okay. So now let's look at the next problem. Let's use black. We got five. And guys, because it's in parentheses, I'm going to leave it. Five plus eight, sorry. Parentheses divided by eight equals x plus y in parentheses over y. Okay. So you see here, they're in parentheses. So we're just going to take one at a time. So that means 8 is going to be multiplied times that whole parentheses. So 8 parentheses x plus y. And I'm just going to do that for one thing. And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing with the y. The y is going to be multiplied times this. Okay? Okay. So let's start with one side. So we got 8 times x is 8x. Then we got 8 times y. That's positive 8y. Okay, we're going to go to the other side. We got y times 5. And we always put the number first. 5y. Y times positive 8. It's positive 8y because we put the number first. Okay, so we're looking for any like terms on the same side. So we see the 5y and 8y are the same. We can just add it because this is what it says. It says 5y plus 8y. That is 13y. Okay. We're going to come up here. We don't have any like terms over here. So we're just going to bring them down. Now we are looking for any like terms on different side that we can put together. So this one has a y and this one has a y. So I never want a zero here. So I'm going to subtract 8y from both sides. Okay, so I got 8x equals 13 minus 8 is going to be 5y. So you see we got an x and a y on opposite sides. That's all I can do because I don't have any more like terms or whatever. So I'm going to come and see if that's the same. So I got 8x equals 5y. Let me move on up. 8x equals 5y. So that is my answer. That is the one that gave me the equivalent 5y equals 8x. Okay, so I have one more example to try, and hopefully that'll help you complete number four. So the first thing we're going to do is do the problem they gave us, and then work the other ones to see which one is going to give us the same simplified answer as the first one. So it has 3 over 7 equals x over y. Cross multiply. 3 times y. 3y equals 7 times x. It's 7x. So if you look here, we got a y on this side and x over here. We don't have any more like terms. We can't do anything. So we're looking for the one that's going to give us 3y equals 7x. Let's look at the first one. We got 3 plus x over 7. Over 7 equals x plus 3 over y. So we're going to see how we can simplify this. So first we're going to start off with cross multiplication. So it doesn't matter which one we start off. Y plus the C is 3 plus X equals, I'm going to come over here, 7 parentheses X plus 3. We're going to distribute next. We're trying our best to get this simplified. So Y times 3, 3 Y, I always put my number first. Y times X is positive X Y. And when you have two letters being multiplied by each other, you always put the one that comes first in the alphabet first. So X comes first, that's why he came first, and Y comes last. Okay, so 7 times X is 7X. Seven, 7 times 3 is a positive 21. Okay, so now we're going to look for like terms and see if we have any like terms. So anything else just have a Y? No. Anything has an XY? No, no, just plain x. 
a plain number. So that's our simplified answer. So let's see, we got 3y equals 7x. So I know that one does not work. So I'm going to go ahead and mark out the first one. And I'm going to go and try the second one. So I'm going to delete this one. So guys, if you don't have it on your paper, pause and get it. Um, wait. Okay, so I'm going to try the next one. So the next one is parentheses, uh oh, parentheses 3 plus 7 divided by 7. So, guys, if you look at how I'm writing it, all I'm doing is writing it like a fraction we're used to seeing. And then x minus y over y. So, once again, we're going to crisscross. So, we're going to use cross multiplication. So we got y equals 3 plus 7. And we're going to go to the th other side equals 7 parentheses x minus y. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to work. So let's get to simplifying this. So first we're going to multiply y times 3. And we get 3y. We get 3y. Then we do y times 7. It's going to be positive 7y. Okay, come to the other side. Equals 7 times x, which is 7x. 7 times negative y gives me a negative 7y. Okay, so let's see. Do we have any like terms on the same side? And it looks like we do. We look like we have this here. So we got 3y plus 7y. That's 10y equals 7x minus 7y. Any more like terms on the same side or different side? Well, it looks like we got a negative 7y and a 10y. So, I'm going to move the 7y over here. So, positive 7y. I have to do the opposite. Plus 7y. So, that gives me 17y equals 7x. And so, that's all we can do for that one. Let's come and see if that's our answer. So we should have 3y. We got 17y. So we know that one's not the answer. So that one's not the answer either. So let's go to the next one. We're looking for the one that's going to give us the answer. And guys, this is a lot of work, I promise you. But this is the way you have to do it. you got to do all these steps. Okay, this one, the next one shouldn't be too hard because it's just a few steps. We got 3 over 7 equals x over y. So we got here 3y equals 7x. Okay, so that looks like that is going to be our answer. Okay, so our answer here was the same as this. Okay, so now if you would go back and try example number 4. I showed you how to write it, and so I showed you how to simplify this one. Okay? So always you can stop and pause this video. Okay? So now we're going to do the one that goes with example number five, which is my number five. Okay? So if we look here, I'm going to change the way it's written. It says 3 over 5, which I'm going to write like that, equals 9 over x. Then what? Okay, so we got this equal sign in there. Remember, all we're going to do is just cross multiply. So we got 3 times x, which is 3x, equals 5 times 9. 5 times 9 is going to equal 45. Sorry. So, on these problems, you look back at our example, number five. That is all they want us to do, is to crisscross one time and get to see what it equals. So, this one we had 3x equals 45. That's all you have to do, is cross multiply one time. Okay, so if we look here at the second example, I'm going to keep it on here. So, I'm just going to write it out so we can see it. 1 over 7 equals 8 over x. 
If we crisscross, we get 1 times x, which is just x, equals 7 times 8, which equals 56. So that's all we want from there. So if you could, come back over here and answer number 5. Number 5 should be really easy. Okay. So here's our next example. It jumps to number three. I kind of did them out of order, but that'll be okay. So let me get this one. Okay, so this is number three. It's going to go with our number question number three. Okay, so first of all, let's see what it's asking me. One thing we got to get used to is reading these questions. It says to find the value of y. So they want to know what y is in this proportion. You must divide 96 by what? Okay, so this one first, we're going to think about this like one problem. That may be easier to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up my shade. No shade intended. And I'm just going to do this part. Because if I gave you this, we would know how to solve this, right? Hopefully. So we would have, we would cross multiply. 4 times x, we get 4x equals 3 times 8, right? And 3 times 8 is going to be 24. Right? Then we divide by 4. Because we're trying to get x by itself. We need to completely solve for x. So x would equal 6. Okay? So that's the first step. Is to figure out what x is. So now I'm going to take this part here. So now I'm going to cover up. If I bring my shade back. This time, I'm covering up the first part. And so I'm looking at x over 8 equals 12 over y. But this time, instead of leaving that x, I know what x is. We just figured out down here, x was 6. I'm going to plug in 6 for my x. So 6 over 8 equals 12 over y. And now, all I have to do now is cross multiply. So we get 6y equals 8 times 12. 8 times 12 is 96. Okay, so look, here's that 96 they were talking about. So it says, what value of y? So what value of y must I divide by? So I'm going to divide 96 by 6 because I want to get y by itself. So I have to divide by 6. It crosses out here. Y equals whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And that's all I have to do. My answer will be 6. They just want to know what value of Y would I have to divide by. But we can go ahead and solve it if we wanted to, but we don't have to. Okay? So let's go over the next one. So let me pull this one up. Okay. So here's my next one. It says to find, and I'm going to read my directions, to find the value of y. So I want to know the value of y. In this proportion, you must divide 48 by what? Okay. So first, if I cover up, I'm going to cover up my last part of this problem only do this. I'm only going to find the x first. So we get 2x equals 12. And then we got to get x completely by itself. Divide by 2 on both sides. x equals 12 divided by 2. It's 6. Okay? So that's what my x value is. Okay? So now I'm only going to work with this part, the last part. So we got x over 12 
equals 4 over y. So this time I already know that x equals 6. So I can plug in my 6 for my x. So we get 6y equals 4 times 12, which is 48. There's my 48 that we're talking about. So what do I have to divide by? What number is in front of y? Because it says, what is the value of y? Well, when I divide, I divide by 6. And so here we go. Your answer is 6. Okay? So now if you could... Go back here and answer number three. So that's your next example. Pause it while you're working, and I'm going to go on to the next one. Okay, so this one is to answer question number six. So I have two examples here. I'm going to take a picture of the first one. And this one, I will pull up my calculator to let you see what we're doing. But, guys, we're going to write this out a little differently. Because this right here, if you look, it's 1, one divided by 4. And it says ratio to 2 over 6 equals 4 divided by 5 ratio x. So a lot of people say, oh, Lord, how do we write this one? But it's simple. We're going to write it out. So 1 divided by 4 is on top. It's going to be ratio to 2 over 6. Okay, here goes my equal sign, and that's what comes next. And it says equal 4 over 5 divided by x. So now, even though we had some fractions in there, and if you didn't want to use fractions, you could change the decimal, but let's leave it how it is right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to criss cross. Cross multiply. That's basically what we're doing. So we're going to do x times 1 over 4. So x and 1 fourth, that's basically what we get. Right? Because anything times that's going to be the other thing. Okay, so if I pull up my calculator, which I don't see it. I'm going to pause this video for a second. Okay, guys. Unfortunately, I cannot show you how to do this in your calculator because my calculator icon won't work. But so all you got to do is, and I'm going to put parentheses around this. This says 2 divided by 6. So we do parentheses 2n over d, 6. Close your parentheses times 4n over d, 5. Close your parentheses and you should get 4 over 15. Okay? So, you just got to put that in your calculator. I can show you if you don't understand how we got that. Okay, now, we're trying to get x by itself. So, that means we're going to divide by 1 over 4 on both sides. Okay? So, whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. So, we're going to do the opposite this time. But we're going to do it just like we did with parentheses. But this time, we're going to use our n over d. So, we do parentheses for n over d. 15, close your parentheses, divided by parentheses 1, ABC, I mean N over D, 4, close your parentheses, and we get 16 over 15. So guys, I will be welcome to show y'all how to do this, because my calculator icon did not work, sorry. So it's 16 over 15. So Y'all try it and see. Okay, I got one more example for that before you can answer that one. So let me get my camera, take a picture of it. So that's all we're doing. So basically, you do 2 over 3. Um, let's see, we got 2 over 3. And you can leave it like that or however you want to. 2 over 3 divided by. 3 over 4 equals 4 over 5 x. So crisscross 
You're using cross multiplication. So x times 2 over 3. And guys, you really should put it in the front. Last time I put it in the back, I believe. Equals. And then we're going to multiply these. So let me walk you through. Parentheses 3. N over D. 4. Close your parentheses. Parentheses 4. N over D. 5. Close your parentheses. Enter. And you should get 3 over 5. Okay? So we want to get X by itself. So we divide by 2 over 3. That cancels out. We need to divide by 2 over 3 over here. Okay? Let's put in our calculator. So parentheses 3. N over D. 5. Close your parentheses. Divide by. I'm just hitting the divide by. You probably can hit N over D again. It doesn't matter. Parentheses. 2. N over D. 3. Close your parentheses. Enter. And we get 9 over 10. So like I said, if you don't get that one, I will show you how to do that one. But at least try and see can you get it. You probably can if you try. Okay. So now you are set to answer problem C. Okay. So next, our next one should be, let's see here. It's going to answer question number seven. Okay, so number seven, it says A over 18 equals 2 over 8, right? Then it says, then, parentheses, A plus 6 divided by 6 will equal what? So, in order to do that first, we got to take care of our first problem they gave us. And we're, once again, we're going to use cross multiplication. So, we got 8 times A, which is 8A. Then we're going to do 18 times 2. That gives us 36. We're going to solve for A by dividing by 8. We get A equals 36 divided by 8. We get 4.5. Okay, so what we just figured out is what A was. So now, all we got to do is take our equation. We have A plus 6, and that's a 6 divided by 6. And we're just going to plug our A in to the problem. So we got 4.5 plus 6. And these are already in parentheses divided by 6. Okay, so let me walk you through how to put this in. Parentheses, 4 plus 4.5 plus 6. Close your parentheses. N over D, 6. And we get 1.75. And then, guys, if I want a fraction, right above the inner, right across from the 3, it's a toggle button. Hit the toggle button, and it gives us 7 over 4, whichever one they want. So here's the fraction, here's the decimal. So first, got to figure out what A is by using cross multiplication, and then you just plug in. So I plugged in 4.5 for A. Okay? So now let's go back and try the second one. Um, where is okay? And then y'all will be ready for example number seven. So it looks like they want the answer as a fraction, just looking at that question. Okay, so first you got a over four. So we're gonna write that a over four equals six. And that's a 6 over 28. And then they want us to find what A is and then plug it into this equation. So let's first figure out what A is. So we got 4 times 6 is 24 equals 28 times A. That'll be 28A. So now we got to get A by itself by dividing by 28. Whatever we do to one side, we got to do to the other. So plug in 24, N over D, 28. And we get 6 over 7. So A equals 6 over 7. Okay. 
So A equals 6 over 7. So now we got our equation. A minus 4 divided by 4. So all we're going to do is plug that in. And guys, if we want to use a decimal, because let me see if it would be easier. If I hit the toggle key right above the enter, no. So I'm going to use 6 over 7 because it gave me a big number. So 6 over 7 is going to replace that minus 4 divided by 4. Okay? So let's hit our parentheses, 6, n over d, 7, arrow, minus 4, parentheses, n over d, 4. And we get negative 11 over 14. So that's our answer. And if I wanted a decimal, it would be a long decimal number. But that's what we need. So now you should be able to go back and answer number 7. Pause the video as you need it. Okay. So here is number... Uh, where's number 8? I skipped number 8 somewhere. Okay. So here's number 8. This one's a review as well, so it's not going to take as long to do. So what I'm going to do first... It says if a over 9, I'm going to write it the way we write it, a over 9 equals 64 over a. So all we're going to do is crisscross. So we got a times a. That's going to be a squared equals 9 times 64. We get 576. Then in order to get a by itself, we got to get rid of this squared by taking the square root of both. If you take the square root of 576, you get A equals 24. Or, and I think looking at your answers, they even may want you to go to A squared equals 576. You don't even have to solve it. Looking at this here. So that's what they want when we got here, when we cross multiply. All they want us to do is cross multiply. Okay, so let's do this one. A over 7 equals 28 over a okay so this one we will have a squared and then we'll multiply here 7 times 28 196 and that's all we have to do you don't even have to solve it so now you should be able to do number 8 okay so now we are ready for number 9 okay so I think 9 through 12 is going to be dealing with this triangle. So, okay. Let's see. We're going to look at the first 9 example. Number 9 example. Okay. Okay, it says given ED so I'm just going to mark this because this is what it's telling me ED divided by DB so ED is going to be same as DB because these are proportion now it may not look like proportion because I made this up for this bottom, this picture but they're going to be proportion so they're going to be equal so they're going to be equal to CE so CE is this line over here and CE is going to be equal to CB so you see what I kind of did? What I, all I did was kind of put the tally marks where they kind of match up it. So like ED, this one here, is con ratio to that one. Okay, so it says then ED, ED, I'm going to do a different color, ED, ED over EC. So these two is equal to, this one has a question mark here. Then they say CB. Okay. So if you look here, we're trying to look at the ones that are, pro, are proportioned to each other. So the way you got it, you got ED right here is now going to EC. So we started with ED. What would be equivalent? to ED. What else has tick marks? That's what's going to be across from here. Here we go. 
db. And so that means db, db is going to be equivalent to db. Okay, so that's the way it works. So, and that's how you find the answer. Let's come here. Let's try the second one. And I like to write online. It helps me to see it. So let's look here. It says, and I'm sorry those lines are there. It says DC. So where is DC? Okay, here's my DC. It's congruent to CB. Okay, so we got those. Then AD. So AD is congruent to AB. Okay, so you see I got the one tick mark for the ones that are the same. So I'm going to write this out. It says DC over DA equals and we got AB at the bottom. Okay, so we got DC. Here's my DC. And we got DA. So we got to go to the first, the one that's going to match with DC. DC is going to match with CB. Because it's gonna, that's going to be your other side. So that's all you're basically doing. It's looking at the ones that cor correspond. Okay? So now you should be able to answer number nine. Okay, pause if you need to. Okay, I am going to example 10 and 11. And I put 10 and 11 together because basically if you can do 10, you can do 11. Okay? So the main thing is reading what they say. So this one, we got NM. Okay, I'm going to mark it NM over ML. So those two are going to get one tick mark. Okay, then you're going to come over here. KL. So this one is KL to KN. Okay. It says then KL over KN. So KL over KN. What must it equal? So let's look at KL. So KL is the one with two tick marks. So, all they're doing is putting this basically okay on this one I made a mistake let me fix the mistake K -A -K -L over ML sorry guys I knew there was something I made a mistake on so that should be ML so change this to ML. Okay. So now it says KL over ML. So all we got to do is find the one that's going to match with KL. And you can do it several ways. You can do it this way looking here or whatever. So KL. So we look here. KL is going to match up with this one here. This is the same position. So that should be KN. And then the ML, so that's ML. And I'm going to rewrite this and do this one over. So ML was here. So that means it's going to match up with MN. And so I just want to redo this one so we can see this one a little bit better. So first of all, we're going to start with this. And it says if KL over ML must be equal, what else must be equal? So let's delete all of this and start over so sorry I made a mistake on that then what else must be equal so I'm gonna erase my lines here and kind of start over so NM and ML they're in the same position so they're gonna be congruent KL and KN are congruent okay so now if I come here KL KL is the one with two. So what else has two? KN. Okay. And then we got ML, which is down here. And then we got to go in the same order, MN. So that's our equation. So that's what's equal. 
okay? And that was the first one on number nine, I mean number 10. Let me do this one. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake on this one. Sorry. So, okay, on this one here. got MR down here in RA and we got JA and JM so we have both of those congruent so let's see okay so we got JA over RA has to be equal to what so let's look what is in JA what else has to well JM And then R A, so we go from R to A, and we gotta go from R to M because it has one. And that's our answer. Okay, so now that should help you complete 10th and 11th. Okay, pause it if you need to. Okay, so I think this is the last one, number 12. So number 12 is similar to the ones that we just did, but this time it's going to add numbers in there. Okay, so it says DR is congruent to RE and DE to DI. So it says find the missing length. So if dr is 10, I'm going to write 10 here. So that's dr. And then if re right here is 8, di is 12. So the way I do this one is I write what they gave me. I write it out. I got dr over RE equals as equal DE over DI and it says find the missing thing so to me all I do is then write what each one equals so DR they gave me 10 right that's what they said DR is 10 okay they got RE Okay, they got RE equals 8. So I put in 8. DE, that's the one I don't know. So I'm just going to put an X right now. Because I don't know what it is. DI, they gave me 12. So when I don't know something, you usually put an X or some kind of variable. So I'm going to crisscross. So we get 8X equals 10 times 12. It's going to equal 120. And then we're going to get x by itself by dividing by 8. Whatever you do by one side, you got to do by the other. So x equals, let's do that math, 120 divided by 8. We got 15. So our missing value is 15. Okay? So let's look at the second one. And this will be our last one that y'all will have to do. Okay. So let's write it out. So this is KS over SH as, so that equal KH over KE. And all we got to do is really plug in the numbers for where they go. So KS is 12. That's what it says up here. It says SH is 10 over 10 equals KH. Well, we don't know what KH is, so I'm just going to put an X. And then we got KE is 20. 
So we're going to cross multiply because we got to find KH. So we got 10 times X. That'll be 10X equals 12 times 20. What is that? 240. 12 times 20. Yep, 240. And then we're going to divide by 10 to get X by itself. And we're going to get whatever you do one side, you do to the other. X equals 24. So that's our answer for KH, 24. Okay? So now go back to, uh-oh, go back to this one and complete number 12. So that should end this lesson.